Welcome students, we have already covered the design of three phase induction motor that is module number 4. Now let us continue with the module number 5 that is the design of synchronous generators. So the construction of synchronous generator, working principle, everything you have studied in your lower semesters. Now just we will recall some of the topics which you have learned in the lower semesters uh, before going for actual syllabus. Synchronous machine is constituted of a both the synchronous motors as well as synchronous generators. So the generators which are used in power plants are called as a synchronous generators or one more name for that one is alternators. So the in they will generate the three phase AC supply, correct. So, synchronous motors, the motors which are AC motors which are used in the industries are called as a synchronous motors. So, this synchronous machine is rotating at a synchronous speed. An AC system has some advantages over a DC system. Therefore, the AC system is exclusively used for generation, transmission and distribution of electrical power. The main the machine which converts mechanical power into AC electrical power is called as a synchronous generator or alternator. The machine which converts the mechanical power to electrical power. So it is an AC supply, correct. So three phase AC supply output will be given in the synchronous machines or synchronous generator. And another name for that one is alternator. However, if the same machine can be operated as a motor is known as a synchronous motor. So the machine which can be operated as a motor is called as a synchronous motor. Synchronous machine is an AC machine whose satisfactory operation depends upon the maintenance of the following relationship. So in the synchronous machine or in the AC machine you have following relationship, correct. So that is NS is equal to 120 F by P or F is equal to P into NS divided by 120 where NS is the synchronous speed. NS is called as a synchronous speed and F is the supply frequency and P is the number of poles. So supply frequency you can call it as or you can uh, write it as P into NS divided by 120. Where NS is the synchronous speed in revolutions per minute. So it is called as RPM and F is the supply frequency and P is the number of poles in the machine. Now what are the types of synchronous machine? Synchronous machines are, or synchronous generators are classified as salient pole machines and non-salient pole machines or cylindrical rotor machines. So the classification of synchronous generators uh, can be uh, done as salient pole machines and non-salient pole machines or cylindrical rotor machines. These classifications are depends upon the type of construction used in the rotor. So this is a typical example of or the figure of salient pole and non-salient pole synchronous generator. So this you have already studied in your lower semester. So this is a salient pole type. So salient pole rotor. So here rotor field winding is here. So this is the poles, projected poles or salient poles you can say alternate north and south poles. Correct. So this is a projected salient pole or rotor field windings. And this is a uh, distributed winding, correct, in the stator. So this is the stator frame, correct, stator frame. And uh, here the armature is a stationary part and field winding is the rotating part. In the synchronous generator, field winding is the rotating part and armature is the uh, stationary part. So this is the base of that one. So here this is a non-salient pole or cylindrical rotor type. Correct. So this is the pole, north, south poles are there. So less number of poles in the non-salient pole machines. Correct. So this is the conductors and the winding. So cylindrical non-salient rotor. Correct. So this is the distributed stator winding. And here 
the rotor field winding is there here, rotor field winding. So the direction of current which is shown here, uh, plus and here dotted lines, correct. So the direction of current which is inward, correct. It is in the cross mark and the current of the direction of current which is outward. So it is in shown in the dotted line. So this is the base bit. So this is a non-salient pole machine. Salient pole machines are driven by water wheels or diesel engines. So salient pole machines which are used for water wheels or diesel engines. They operate at low speeds and so large number of poles are required to produce the desired frequency. In salient pole machines, they are running at lower speeds, lower speeds around 1500 RPM and having the large number of poles, many number of poles will be there. So based on the equation 120F by P, 120F by P equal to synchronous speed that is Ns, we can calculate the required number of uh, poles in a uh, salient pole machine. So they operate at low speeds and large number of poles are required to produce the desired frequency. This type of machine has projecting poles and uh, field coils are mounted on the poles. So uh, this machine has a projecting poles and field coils are mounted on the poles. So the field winding is present in the uh, in the rotor of a synchronous machine. So cylindrical rotor machines are driven by steam turbines and gas turbines which run at a very high speeds. So if you see the cylindrical rotor machines or non-salient pole machines, so they are driven by a steam turbines and uh, gas turbines uh, which is required for high speed machines. So they run at a very high speeds. They have slots on the outer periphery of the smooth cylindrical rotor the field conductors are placed on these slots. So they have slots on the outer periphery, uh, number of slots are present in the outer periphery and they are also called as a smooth cylindrical rotor and field conductors are placed on these slots. Synchronous machines operating on general power supply network may be divided into following categories. So the synchronous generator operating at a power, a general power pl plants or power supply can be divided into following categories. So first one is the hydro generators. Hydro generators, uh, the hydro power plants where the asynchronous generators are used. The prime mover is a water wheel here. Water wheel is used as a prime mover to run the generator, correct. So to run the synchronous generator, you need to have a prime mover or the mechanical energy or mechanical uh, part which is required to rotate the synchronous generator. So that is called as a prime mover. The prime mover is a water wheel and it is driven at 100 to 1000 RPM. So it is available to a capacity of 750 megawatt. So the prime mover which is used in the hydro power plants uh, or the synchronous generators which are used in the hydro power plants are of capacity 750 megawatt. So next one is turbo alternators. So turbo alternator, it is also called as a high speed alternators. So the prime mover is a steam turbine or gas turbine. Here in this case turbo alternators, the prime mover which is used is a steam turbine or the gas turbines which run at 3000 RPM, very high speed. And it is manufactured up to a capacity of 1000 megawatt. So the capacity of the turbo alternators up to 1000 megawatt. So next one is the engine driven. The prime mover is internal combustion engine or IC engines, either diesel engine or petrol engine. So here it is an engine driven, uh, either diesel engine or petrol engine is used as a prime mover and it is an IC engine. So the speed uh, is up to 1500 RPM and manufactured up to a rating of 20 megawatt. So for industries and all, um, for industries if there is a power supply, power failure or there is a restriction in the power. In from the grid, then uh, industry people will use the uh, this internal combustion engine or diesel or petrol engine captive power plants. It is called as a captive power plants for their requirements. So their power requirement as well as their uh, restricted load. If there is a restricted load, so they need to use this uh, uh, captive power plant. So maximum of uh, power rating is around 20 megawatt. So next, uh, if you see the synchronous motors, so synchronous motors are manufactured in wide ranging capacity and they are provided with damper winding. The windings which are provided are damper winding. So they are ma manufactured with the wide ranging, wide ranging capacity. 
Next compensators, so these are also synchronous motors. Uh, these compensators or synchronous motors run at a leading power factor to supply the reactive power to a transmission network. So the reactive power injection is done by the use of synchronous motors or it is called as a compensators. So whenever the reactive power injection is required in the transmission lines, so the losses will be more in that case. So to improve the losses or leading power factor to uh, inch to become the, to improve the leading power factor, so uh, reactive power injection can be done through the synchronous compensators. They are manufactured up to a rating of 100 MVR and runs up to 3000 RPM. So the synchronous comp compensators run, uh, manufactured up to a range of 100 MVR and uh, the running speed of that one is 3000 RPM. Next, turbo alternator. So, turbo alternators are characterized with long axial length and short diameter. So, if you see the rotor of a turbo alternator, so they have long axial length and short diameter. The high speed of the rotor limits the diameter of the rotor to about 1.2 meter. The high speed of the rotor is uh, limits the diameter because if you limit the diameter of the rotor, then only you can achieve the high speed. So, the rotor diameter is around 1.2 meter giving a peripheral speed of about 175 meter per second. The, if you see the, if you calculate the speed at the periphery of the rotor, so that will be around 175 meter per second. So that is called as a peripheral speed. So around 175 meter per second. Next, hydro generators. So this type of prime mover for this alternator depends upon the available water head. So the type of prime mover which is used in the hydro generators are depends upon the uh, height of the water head. The Pelton wheel is used for water head of 400 meter and above. If the water head is around above 400 meter, so the Pelton wheel is used. Francis turbine is used for water head up to 380 meter. So if you are having the water head up to 380 meter, so Francis turbine is used. And Kaplan turbine is used for water head up to 50 meter. So small uh, water head, you can use the Kaplan turbine. So the speed of these alternators varies from 50 to 500 RPM. So different speeds you need to use the different types of prime movers for a hydro generators. The peripheral speed of the rotor is limited to 80 meter per second. So in the hydro generators, the peripheral speed if you calculate, the speed at the periphery is around 80 meter per second. Now what is meant by runaway speed of a alternator? The runaway speed is defined as the speed which the prime mover would have if it is suddenly unloaded when working at a, at a rated load. So if the prime mover is uh, taking the load at the rated load, so the current in current flowing through the windings will be at a rated load, correct, rated current or the prime mover is taking at the rated load. Suddenly if you disconnect the load, so what is the speed at which the prime mover is rotating? or at uh, speed at which the prime mover is running is called as a runaway speed. So when suddenly if your load is removed from the prime mover, when it is fully loaded, fully loaded, so at the speed at which the prime mover is rotating is called as a runaway speed of the alternator. Steam turbines are equipped with quick acting over speed governors which are set to trip at 1.1 times the rated speed. So you in the Alternators, if the prime mover is a steam turbine, so they are provided with a speed governors. So uh, to increase the load of the generator or the alternator or to decrease the load, we need to uh, operate the speed governors. So the speed governors are uh, set up to trip at 1.1 times the rated speed. If the rated speed is go beyond the 1.1 times, then uh, speed governors will give the signal to the relay and the relay will trip. Hence, turbo alternators are designed for 1.25 times the rated speed. So, turbo alternators will be having more speeds around 1.25 times the rated speed. So, uh, this part it is just a recalling of what you have learned in your lower semesters. Now, coming to the actual uh, syllabus of uh, design of synchronous machine uh, with respect to electrical machine design. So, the first part we need to study is the output equation of synchronous generator. So you have already learned or you have already studied the output equation of three-phase induction motor in the uh, module number four. So 
the derivation of output equation of synchronous machine as well as the three phase induction motor is similar. So, there is no difference in the derivation of uh, output equation of three phase synchronous generator, correct. So, derivation of output equation of synchronous machine is same as that of th three phase induction motor. So, uh, both are rotating machines. So, you can, uh, the steps of deriving the output equation is similar in the both the case. And the final output what you are get got in the three phase induction motor is KV output to Q is equal to C naught into D square into L into NS, where C, uh, KV output is Q and C naught is the output coefficient. C naught is the output coefficient and D is the stator bore diameter, which is same in case of induction motor as well as the synchronous generator. And L is the core length, L is the core length and NS is the synchronous speed at uh, synchronous speed at RPS, correct, rotation per second, synchronous speed at RPS that is NS. So, output coefficient C naught is given by 11 into BAV, BAV is the specific magnetic loading or average flux density and AC is called as a specific electrical loading and KW is the winding factor into 10 to the power minus 3. So, which is similar to that of a derivation of three phase induction motor. So, there is no difference in the derivation. Wherever, whenever there is a three phase induction motor word is there, so you have to replace it with the synchronous generator or alternator. Okay. So, that is the method of deriving. So, uh, derivation of synchronous uh, output equation of synchronous machine is also important in the examination point of view. So, one of the expected question in this particular module. Now, we need to learn about the uh, what are the choices of specific magnetic loading, what are the parameters to be considered for selecting the specific magnetic loading of uh, synchronous machines, so that we have to see. So, factors affecting the choice of specific magnetic loading of synchronous machines are, first one is the iron loss. So, following factors are affecting the choices of specific magnetic loading, in that first one is the iron loss. High value of flux density in the air gap leads to the high value of flux density in the stator teeth and stator core. So, there is a st uh, air gap between stator and rotor of synchronous generator also. So, if you provide a high value of flux density that is flux per unit area, uh, if it is higher then that leads to the high value of flux density in the stator teeth also. Stator is also having the stator slots, correct and the conductors are present in that one armature conductors. So, the uh, stator teeth that is the distance between the two slots, correct. So, in between distance between the two slots, so that will be having high flux density in the stator teeth and as well as the in the state, stator core. So, which results in high iron loss. So, that will lead to the high iron loss with the consequent decrease in the efficiency. So, if the iron loss is higher, then um, there will be a decrease in the efficiency takes place and increase in the temperature rise. So, if there is a losses are more, iron losses are more, so there will be increase in the temperature also takes place and um, which uh, incre decreases the efficiency of the machine. Therefore, lower value of gap density should be used in order to increase the efficiency and to decrease the temperature rise. So, if you need to improve the efficiency or decrease the iron loss or uh, decrease the temperature rise, we need to uh, reduce the value of gap density or we need to reduce the value of flux density in the air gap. So, that is the procedure. Next one is the voltage. So, in case of machine, so the synchronous generators are uh, designed for high voltage purpose, correct. So, the voltage around the uh, output voltage of synchronous generator is around 6.6 .6 kilo volt or 11 kilo volt. So, it is a high voltage machine. So, if you are having high voltage machine, so you need to provide the better insulation in case of high voltage machines, correct. So, the space required for the insulation should be more when compared to other machines, low voltage machines. So, in case of machines designed for high voltages, the space occupied by insulation becomes greater. So, uh, the space for the insulation is, uh, space required for insulation is high in case of synchronous generators. So, the space occupied by the insulation becomes greater and smaller space is left for the teeth. So, if you increase the insulation part, then uh, there is no space or the lesser space is uh, uh, utilized for the design of a teeth of a uh, stator, correct. 
So therefore, lower value of gap density should be used in high voltage machines to avoid excessive value of flux density in the teeth and core. So to reduce the excessive value of flux density in the teeth and core, we need to provide a lower value of gap density. Flux density should be used in the high voltage machines. So third point we need to consider is the transient short circuit current. So uh, short circuit current is one of the important parameter to be considered for selecting the uh, specific magnetic loading in case of synchronous generators. A high value of gap density or flux density results in decrease in the leakage reactance. So if you choose high value of flux density, then there is a decrease in the leakage reactance of the machine will be getting with the consequent increase in the initial value of armature under short circuit conditions. Therefore, lower value of gap density should be used to limit the initial electromagnetic forces under short circuit condition. So due to short circuit, so there will be electromagnetic forces will be developed in the, uh, in the uh, synchronous machine. So if you provide a low value of flux density, so uh, the short, under short circuit condition, the electromagnetic forces can be limited. Next, stability of the, uh, what are the effect of stability? What is meant by stability? So synchronous generators are uh, used normally. Uh, it is used to uh, utilize it for synchronization, correct. So two or more synchronous generators are uh, synchronized together or the generators are synchronized to the power grid or the electricity supply, correct. So main supply. So to, to run the parallel operation, we need to synchronize the two generators as well as the generator to the power grid. So if there is any disturbance occurs in the uh, synchronous generators, so due to that disturbance, how, how the uh, generator will be un under stable condition, if, even if the disturbance occurs, in how much long, how, how long period that generator will be under stable condition. So that is the stability of that particular synchronous generator. So even if the disturbance occurs, so the synchronizing will be there in the system as well as the in, uh, synchronous generator will be continuously rotating for uh, longer period of time. So that is our expectation. If it is running for a longer period of time, even if there is a disturbance occurs or any fault occurs in the generator. So that is the stability of that particular generator. The maximum power which is cylindrical rotor machine can del deliver under steady state condition is given by P max is equal to EV divided by XS. So this is the equation for the maximum power delivered by the uh, cylindrical rotor machines. So where E is the induced EMF and V is the terminal voltage of generator, correct. So where XS is this called as a synchronous reactance. So the maximum power developed by the uh, cylindrical rotor machine is given by P max is equal to EV divided by XS. Okay. Hence the maximum power or steady state stability limit of a machine is inversely proportional to its synchronous reactance. So if you see the equation, so the maximum power is inversely proportional to the synchronous reactance in case of uh, steady, state, uh, steady state limit of a machine. So a high value of flux density results in lesser turns per phase and so lesser reactance. So if you have higher flux density, flux per unit area, if it is there, so that is uh, leads to the lesser number of turns per phase. Number of turns in the winding should be lesser. That will lead to the lesser reactance, correct. So therefore the use of high magnetic loading increases the steady state stability limit. So lesser reactance means you can improve the steady state stability of that particular synchronous generator. So if you provide a high value of magnetic loading, so that will uh, st increases the steady state stability or limit of the synchronous generator. Next, uh, parallel operation. The satisfactory parallel operation of synchronous generator depends upon the synchronizing power. So uh, two or more generators or uh, synchronous generators are running in parallel or they are synchronized with the power grid, correct. So the uh, parallel operation power is depends upon the uh, synchronizing power of that particular generator. Higher value of synchronizing power results in better stability of the machine in parallel. So if you provide higher value of uh, uh, synchronizing power, that will uh, come due to the higher value of flux density, correct. So that will lead uh, results in better stability of the machine which is running under parallel. The synchronizing power is inversely proportional to the reactance. Therefore, machine with higher magnetic loading operate satisfactory in parallel. 
So if you provide a high magnetic loading, high flux density, then the machine will be running in parallel satisfactory. So that is the thing. So because the synchronizing power is nothing but it is inversely proportional to the reactance. So if you have uh, reactance of the machine is lesser, then uh, the synchronizing power will be higher. So the maximum power de delivered by the machine is higher or the generator is higher. So the, if you provide a higher value of magnetic loading, so that will offer operate at uh, satisfactorily parallel operation. The specific magnetic loading uh, BAV lies in the range of 0.5 to 0.65 Weber per meter square. So in the synchronous generator, specific magnetic loading BAV, you can calculate in the range of 0.5 to 0.65 Weber per meter square. Next step is what are the parameters to be considered for choice of specific electrical loading, correct. So similar to that of induction motor, we need to consider the factors which affect the choice of specific electrical loading. Factors affecting the choice of specific electrical loading of synchronous machines are, so first one is the copper loss and temperature rise. What is the effect of uh, copper loss and the temperature rise? A high value of AC, that is a, a specific electrical loading. High value of AC means specific electrical loading gives higher copper loss resulting in lower efficiency and higher temperature rise. If you provide a higher value of uh, specific electrical loading, so we, uh, the copper loss will be higher and which uh, leads to the lower, lower the efficiency of the machine. And uh, of course, the temperature also increases, there will be increase in the temperature. The value of AC used depends upon the cooling techniques employed. So uh, how much value of AC, that is specific electrical loading you need to provide. So that depends upon the what are the types of cooling techniques which are used in the uh, synchronous generator. Higher value of AC are used in the machine which employ cooling techniques that effectively dissipate the generated heat. So if you provide a better cooling when you provide the higher value of AC, so that will, uh, uh, that will dissipate the heat effectively, dissipate the generated heat inside the machine or synchronous generator effectively. Second pa parameters we need to consider is, uh, of course, it is a voltage which is uh, similar to that of choice of specific magnetic loading. A high value of AC can be used for low voltage machines since the space required for insulation is small. So if the, uh, in, in the synchronous generator, the voltage will be higher, correct. So the voltage value will be higher. So we need to provide more number of space for the insulation. So higher value of AC can be used for low voltage machines. If the voltage is lesser, then you can provide the high volt, uh, higher value of AC. So that, uh, what is the effect of that one, which uh, reduces the insulation provided. The space required for the insulation is small in that case. And third parameter we, have, we need to consider is the synchronous reactance. The value of AC affect the leakage reactance and armature reaction in the machine. So the value of uh, AC, that is uh, specific electrical loading, affect the leakage reactance of the machine and as well as the armature reaction. So high value of uh, AC leads to high value of leakage reactance and armature reaction and consequently a high value of synchronous reactance. If you provide high value of AC, uh, high value of specific electrical loading, that will leads to the high value of leakage reactance. Because uh, high value of AC means you need to provide more number of conductors or the number of turns per phase will be more, number of turns per phase or TS value will be higher. So that will lead to the higher value of leakage reactance and armature reaction also it will be more. In that case, uh, high value of synchronous reactance will be generated uh, or excess value will be higher in that case. Hence a machine designed with high value of AC has the following characteristics, uh, poor voltage regulation. If you provide a higher value of AC, then it leads to the poor voltage regulations because voltage value will be decreases, output voltage will be decreases. And second uh, uh, consequence is low current under short circuit condition. And third is low value of steady state stability limit. Steady state stability limit will be decreases if you provide the high value of a specific electrical loading. And, and the short circuit cur current under, uh, short circuit current current will be also lesser in that case. So low value of synchronizing power. Synchronizing power of that particular machine will be decreases. And next point we need to consider is the stray load losses. 
the state load losses increases steeply with the increase in the specific electrical loading. So, if you provide a high value of a specific electrical loading, stray load losses will be increases in that particular machine. So, following are the values of AC. So, these are all the parameters, four parameters uh, in case of specific electrical loading, factors affecting the specific electrical loading. So, the following are the values of AC, that is specific electrical loading. For salient pole machines, it is 20,000 to 40,000 ampere per meter or 20,000 to 4 lakh, 4 lakh ampere per meter. For turbo alternators, it is 50,000 to uh, 7 lakh 50,000 ampere per meter. So, that is the value of uh, specific electrical loading we can choose for a particular synchronous generator. So, we will stop here and we will continue the continue in the next video. Thank you.